What up, folks? You made it. It's your favorite comic on the come up. Back for season three of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. If you've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy from the perspective of a rising comic, as well as kicking with some of the dopest comedians in the business, then this is the podcast for you. What up, what up, what up? Once again, it's your boy, Melly Mel, Melvin Williams, back for another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. Indeed, season three, episode three. And boy, do I got a special one for y'all this go round. I've been trying to nail this interview down for the longest, man. I'm talking about I've been hitting him up whenever he showed up, no matter where he was, no matter what comedy club he was at, he was getting a message from me on his Instagram or from his uh, Facebook or wherever it was. And just even somebody, people telling him. I had a friend that I had to reach out to to uh, tell him how I want to interview him. And finally, man, when he came to the ATL to do the, um, when he came to do the uh, Atlanta Comedy Theater over in Norcross, I finally had him. The one and only Mr. Tony Roberts, Detroit's finest. What they call him, the Motor Mouth, the Motor, the motor City Motor Mouth. That's what I heard they call him. So, man, hey, I finally got a chance to get that interview. I was hype as hell about it. We had a very good time, man. He killed the spot. And then right after that, man, we went back to the green room and did. he did gave me a super dope interview. So I want you guys to stay tuned for that. Y'all already know how this works. Shout out, Roger Feeney. Thank you so much for giving me my start with the Comedy Chatter podcast, man. If it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for you Seeing my vision, I wouldn't be able to get this thing cracking. Also, my dude, Mr. David Pittman, same goes for him. My sound and editing dude, he helped me out immensely in terms of getting this thing started. If it wasn't for both of those gentlemen, I wouldn't have a podcast and be on season three at this point. So I always shout them out every single time. My back in the day sponsor, oh my God. My back in the day sponsor, man, a friend of mine showed me this shit on uh, YouTube and I swear to God, I had all, I forgot about it, but I used to fuck with this when I was a kid. And I'm sure some other Midwest folk out there used to fuck with it. But my back in the day sponsor this go around, Showbiz Pizza Place. Hot damn. Now, hey, who 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 gonna tell me they didn't fuck with, with Showbiz? Now, everybody like talk Chuck E. Cheese and this, that, and the other, how they be doing, you know, the, 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 the uh, Animatrix and the, and the people playing the music and all of that shit. But hey, Showbiz started that shit. Showbiz Pizza Place was the spot where you go and you have all the fun when you was a kid. And I don't give a damn what nobody say. Hey, when you you used to go there for that pizza, but you used to love to sit down and watch them damn animals play that music and sing all them popular ass songs. And that damn gorilla in the middle playing that piano? Shit. Hey, go YouTube it right now. Showbiz Pizza Place. Go YouTube it. And it'll take you back to your childhood. We used to go up in the showbiz. And them motherfucking animals used to shut that shit down. They be playing guitar, and they be playing drums and everything. But that day, just make sure you watch the gorilla in the middle. The gorilla up top in the middle of everybody, that some bitch be playing that piano. And they all be singing their ass off, too. <laughs> hey, man, I saw that shit, dog. I was like, oh, my God, I used to fuck with showbiz. I used to go to showbiz all the damn time. Oh, man, it was so funny, man. So, hey. That's my back in the day sponsor. Showbiz ain't around no more, but damn it, if they was here, they'd probably be, be one of my sponsors for the podcast. But as we all know, yeah, I don't got it like that just yet. You know what I'm saying? Season three, episode three, I'm still climbing. Maybe I'll get a sponsor one day. But until now, I just got to use back in the day sponsors. And that's my sponsor this go around. Showbiz Pizza Place. Oh, man, I just, what did I do? I just came back uh, recently from Myrtle Beach, man, out of... Uh, and a 50 hour layover in Myrtle Beach and Lord have mercy man look I think I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think Myrtle Beach is the most slept on motherfucking spot in the United States of America Myrtle Beach South Carolina some of us don't even know where it is that's how slept on it is I'd be like Myrtle Beach they'd be like where is that at like Vegas no Myrtle Beach is in South Carolina dog right off the motherfucking Atlantic Ocean and I'm telling y'all right now, man, hey, <laughs> if y'all motherfuckers ain't fuck with Myrtle yet, dog, please go to Myrtle Beach and just, just yeah, just spend some time, just a day or two. Like, it's so slept on, man. People don't fuck with Myrtle. And see, Myrtle is one of those kind of places where it's dead as hell, like during regular time. 
like during fall and you know winters did but during that spring and summer that's when everybody like take their ass that's like a tourist spot and man dude i'm trying to t- explain to y'all myrtle go down first of all everything cheap south carolina man so everything cheap i drove up on a gas station the gas was a dollar and 74 cent yeah I, hey i i told myself yeah you can afford some shit down here yo if the gas ain't but a dollar seventy four, yeah, my, my money can stretch a little bit down here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the like, cost of living and all that shit ain't hey, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. You can go down there and ball out in Myrtle Beach, man. Second, the weather, like, come on, man. It was 80 degrees every day. Wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. It was beautiful. Like I said, you gotta you all you off the Atlantic. Oh, I ain't off just no regular motherfucking like piece of water. It's the whole Atlantic Ocean. You understand me? On the other side of that motherfucker is Africa. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you on the you on that's the real deal. The Atlantic Ocean. So you got a whole motherfucking ocean, whole beach there. Like, man, I'm telling y'all, dude. People don't fuck with with Myrtle Beach, and I, I'm just like, dog, y'all gotta get. It's, it's some motherfuckers, like I said, don't even know where it is. Don't know where uh, you ain't never been. It's the most slept on spot, man. I'm telling you, the food. They got good food and shit down there, man. Every time me and co-workers and all that fuck around, they go to Myrtle Beach, we have a great time. So y'all, I'm telling you, hey, you, you, hey, thank me later. Go down to Myrtle Beach, man. Get you a hotel for two or three days. I'm telling you, your money's stretched now. Your money is stretched in South Carolina. Go on down there and enjoy yourself. Myrtle is deep. They always having some shit, too. I snuck up on some shit one time. It was Jeep Jam week, and they was having like a Jeep Jam. All these folks out here in a in a in a, in a big old uh, parking lot with their Jeeps and like bumping music and shit. That's where they be having like uh like the Black Motorcycle Week. And I'm telling y'all, man, <laughs> Myrtle Beach boy, like um, yeah, the most slept on spot in America. I'm telling y'all, get down to the to Myrtle. All right. What am I chatting on this go around? You know what? I got one that I want to talk about, and I'm sure it's going to offend some motherfuckers. I already know that right off the bat. It's going to offend some people, but damn it, I'm going to dive into it. And I think the next go around, next time I do an interview, I'm going to ask uh, uh, one of the comics how they feel about it. Because, you know, I I interview headliners uh, usually. So, uh, but uh, yeah. So my chat this go around, what we're chatting on today is about what comics, it's, it's, it's the, the lingo in uh, the comedy clubs is called merch. And what merch is, is it's basically merchandise. That's just, you know, we've shortened up the word merchandise. But uh, all comedians know that when you talk about merch, merch is basically items that you sell at the comedy show. Like, you know, when you, at the comedy club, uh, after you're done performing. See what I'm saying? So, I'm sure you guys have kind of, you know, got done with a comedy show and you go off, you, you know, you're walking out to the exit and then you see comedians out there with tables kind of set up and, you know what I'm saying, and the comic that just got done performing the jokes are over there taking pictures and, you know, just selling like their, their merchandise. You know, to each his own, you do, do whatever you like. And mostly the headliners are the, you know, ones that uh, do this. However... I've been starting to see, and like I said, I've been doing comedy, you know, a little, little while now. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I started in 07, for people who know me. I didn't get serious, like, all the way serious, you know, jump all the way into the to the water until 2010. But, like I said, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of comedians. I've seen a lot of headliners. I've seen the way stuff works. And uh, what I'm starting to notice is that headliners aren't the only ones that are that are selling merch. Like now you got like you know, like the features like you know the middle act like you know they they bring they merchandise, they come and they set up and then, and then sometimes shit like even a you know a guest spot person or a, or an MC like will even have some stuff uh, to, you know that they sell and that's kind of where I wanted to go with this uh, chat this go around man you know how do you guys feel how do people feel about and I'm talking to comics now because you know a lot of you know. Comedy fans don't even know about this. This is more of a comic thing. But how do you guys feel about uh, f- uh, features and MCs and um, and um, guest spot people? Just uh, comedians other than headliners selling merch at a show. Because uh, my take on it is, 
And I'm going to keep it all the way real. This one's going to make it controversial. Like, did nobody come to see you if you're not a headliner? You know what I'm saying? Didn't nobody, didn't nobody know you was going to be there? Like, nobody, they don't, they don't, they don't um, advertise the hosts. They don't advertise the MCs. They don't advertise the features. You know what I'm saying? If Dave Chappelle is in town, they're going to be like, hey, coming to Comedy Club this weekend, Dave Chappelle. You know what I'm saying? So that's who we're coming to see. So if anybody's going to be lined up at a table selling some shit, now obviously Dave Chappelle's probably not going to do that shit because he got plenty of money. But uh, he should be the one standing over there like selling his merch. See what I'm saying? Like the they like like Jim Wiggins that 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 opened up for him shouldn't be over in the corner selling fucking buttons. It's just like it's just it's just my take now, just my take. But uh, I, I do get you know what I'm saying that um you know people are you know trying to get their coins you know people trying to get their money and so you know I, I know some features I know some you know people all no matter where they go they say hey man I got to get on stage and and what it, the way it usually works is too they get on stage. And they, you know, try to do their best set. They try to be as funny as they possibly can be. And then after that, they say, hey, you know, I got these shirts over in the back, man. Uh, you know, you can just kind of give me a donation or you can just kind of like give me, you know, whatever you got. And, you know, you can get a shirt and you can just come say hi to me. Like, bottom line is they're trying to perform their way into, you know, you buying their um, merch. And, uh, yeah, like I said, man, I'm just, you know, my take on it is that nobody should be selling merch other than the headliner. Now, keep in mind, some of the clubs kind of, you know, shut this shit down too. Like whatever club you work in, they be like, yeah, no, nobody else sells merch other than the headliner. If the headliner wants to sell merch, that's fine, but no one else. Some of the clubs will take care of it. And then sometimes the headliner will take care of it. Like, hey, nah, like I'm only, if, if anybody's selling merch, it's me. I'm selling merch. Nobody else is selling merch because I'm the motherfucker that they, 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 I'm the headliner. You know what I'm saying? This is this is almost like an opportunity that you get when you become a headliner, and that's just my you know that's the, that, that, that's my take on it. You know what I mean? Like you, shit like that. that that's 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 damn near disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? To uh to come with your stickers and your t-shirts and all that, and you a feature. You know what I'm saying? You opening up, you get an opportunity to open up for this for this for this uh, headliner, and uh, you bringing your stuff to sell. You know what I mean? Now, like I said, some circumstances differ. Some headliners bring their features or they have relationships with their features. And so if they have a relationship with them, then they're probably cool with them. They're like, yeah, no, yeah, you bring your shit, get your money on, see whatever you can, you know, sell. You know, so if you are granted permission, you know, from the headliner, that's that's cool. But but yeah, I mean, I've just been seeing more and more where you show up to a damn show. And you came to see, like I said, the headliner. You know the headliner. I come to see Tony Roberts. Like, hey, I'm coming to see Tony Roberts. But then you got other motherfuckers like, who is this? Who is that person? I don't even know who that is. Like selling, like selling stuff. And I'm like, dude, like that's hilarious. But like I said, everybody, hey, everybody on that, I need to give my coins kick. And um, that, that's kind of why they do it. I know I'm gonna get a bombard. I know I'm gonna be bombarded by uh, comics like hitting me up and this, that, and the other. Like, hey man, shit. Like that's your take. That's your take. Well, I've already said that. That's my take. Exactly. So it's my opinion. But I gotta get my coins, man. And if he's, if the headliner said it's okay, then it's okay. You absolutely right. I was just like I said. This is the Comedy Chatter podcast. Featuring Meldon Williams. That's who I am. So, like, I'm giving my take on this shit. And, like I said, everybody got their own opinion. So, that's where I am with it. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, Season 3, Episode 3, Mr. Tony Roberts out of Detroit. Want y'all to pay close attention to all of the stuff that Mr. Tony Roberts has to say to you guys. And enjoy this interview. Comedy Chatter Podcast. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much 
back at you with the Comedy Chatter Podcast, the only audio pod from the perspective of an upcoming comedian. I got my man after a whole bunch of Facebook stalking and Instagram stalking and all types of stuff. I'm actually laughing with him about it because I know either he get either he was getting them or he was just like shit. I don't know who the hell this is, but hey, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give it up for my man Tony Roberts. What's going on, sir? What's up, man? That was you stalking me? Oh man, all the messages. I was going in. I thought you was my was baby mama in. boyfriend <laughs> trying to get some information. Hey, I, I was going in, but hey. Much love to Miss Katrina Pope, though. My oh, girl, yeah. she, what she, up, she, yes, was, indeed. What up, yeah, she was, she was the one that made it happen. So anytime I get somebody, I gotta get. Sometimes I gotta, I gotta get the man to sit next to the man. But <laughs> hey, she was that person this time, so she hooked it up. <laughs> yep. So how's everything been with you, man? Yeah, slow, man. But just pick it back up. Yes. Uh, pick it back up. I, uh, what I did when when it, when the pandemic hit and we got shut down, I started writing. Okay. So I wrote a script, a uh, movie script. I got three TV shows. Um, I'm shopping. Um, and my agent want me to wait till January to everything. Because in Hollywood, right now, they're not taking meetings. Okay. You know, they're they doing everything um, virtual themselves. So yeah. the agent's not in the office. So I'm sitting on the, the shows, getting ready to do that. Um, I got... Uh, my my documentary I just finished um, oh, shooting my okay. thirty minute documentary based on the word motherfucker. Okay. Cause don't nobody know where it really come from. Yeah, and yeah. And yeah. when I did this research, I let them know. I, just, I know where it come from. Okay, cool. What about you? You been all right? Man, everything been all you right married? with me, man. No, no. Ladies, not get with this not hot married. brother. This brother, <laughs> it's a hot business. Some hot business. Hey, right I'm gonna need you to tell him. I've been in Atlanta for a long time. Andy, I'm gonna need you to come tell him because they don't know yet. And he's intelligent. He like one of those substitute teachers that like, other teachers want to get with. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now we actually uh kind of uh, got some uh six degree of separation type stuff. Your son, Tony Tail. Right. Man, I, I kind of, me and him was in the same circles back in me. I, came, I grew up in Ann Arbor. Okay. And so we started comedy, and I kind of shared the stage with him a few times. So I told him, I said, I'm about to interview you, Dama. I'm going I'm to shout you out on the pod. So Tony Tell, make sure you listen to the pod and share this thing, man. Yeah, my son Tony Tell up in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, he's got, he's on like episode, he does uh, his own films. Yeah. The papers. He's getting it, too. Yeah, so he's doing, like, different versions of them, but he's, like, to, to number 14. Okay. I need full feature films. Yeah. And uh, what he do, he go on social media, and he, it's not, he don't have a real large big following, like, you know, but he got enough where he put out a, a social media blast and say, hey, I need some actors and actresses to play these parts, blah, blah, blah. They come from Canada, Chicago, Ohio. They come in. They spend a night where they can, yeah. and they do these movies with him. He doing his thing. And on yes. my documentary, he does he do like five uh, animation pieces for me. Okay. He do dope animation. He does he does all the voices. Yeah. So he's talented, man. And then very, he started very. comedy, like you said. Mm -hmm. So he's in my footsteps. His mom can't stand that he's want to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so are, you, are you digging that? You're like, hey, that's yeah, a good thing? you know, at least, at least he's, he's doing that. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, all my kids, cool. Good, yeah. good. That's great to hear. Now, like I said, we already talked, but you came up in the D-Town, Detroit, right? Yeah, born and raised. All right, cool. So I wanted to ask you about when you was uh, coming up and starting, was there any kind of a uh, Detroit fraternity? So did you come up with, like, the folks like, uh, you know, Coco, Foolish, uh, Mike Bond? downtown Tony Brown or was you just kind of like a lone gunner like kind of shooting by yourself no like in Detroit we all came up together it was five of us it was Spanky Hayes Howie Bell Joe Blunt Tony Roney and myself all right and I we know called ourselves the other level okay and we used to do sketch comedy we used to go get an, whoever had the car whoever car broke down we get another car <laughs> uh, I remember me and uh, oh Kool-Aid was with us we had, we Kool, -Aid. Kool Aid rest in peace started, rest in peace my when boy when he started uh, so that's my little brother rest in peace Kool-Aid mm -hmm. so we, we adopted him so me Kool-Aid and Spanky lived in a uh, one bedroom apartment <laughs> man <laughs> for the long all y'all we got evicted twice <laughs> in different apartments acted so, a fool huh? so we did we got a crew <laughs> together and what you do as a young comic always find one or two people that you hang with all the time and everybody, you go in the room and you start throwing out subjects. Okay. Throwing, and then, and then when you get to the very end of the punchline of that subject, one of y'all take it. Okay, you can have that one. Oh, okay. And say so what that you was y'all's writing. That yeah. was y'all's writing. So y'all want to do a joke about, like when you when you go this and your mom catch you doing this, and then say, oh, but she do this, and everybody throw out punchlines, and you keep that person. Then yeah. the next person throw out a subject. What you working on? And we do that, and we help each other. And you wow. need you need that in comedy. Wow. Yeah. You need yeah. that because. You think it's funny, but when you got a mind, four minds in a room that's funny also, you're mm -hmm. not going to leave there. So that's how Detroit comics, 
are the funniest comics, man. Oh, you from the from Michigan? Yeah. Or the Midwest? Because the South got that swag. That that southern twang or whatever you call it. New York it, it, got that it, yo son that little thing yeah, going on. Yeah. The West Coast got they I don't know some about their attitude. <laughs> but Midwest, we don't have nothing to fall on but raw funny. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. So I take it to the joke. The jokes yeah. got to be on point. So the crew got together, we doing this, and then I got I got Comic View back in ninety three. I was getting there, yep. You, you read my mind. I'm the first yep. one got T V. Okay. So we all auditioned for it and they called me. Okay. So I went and did that. Nine months later, I was on Def Comedy Jam. Yeah, exactly. Now, that's my, like I said, you read my mind. Okay. My next question always is every time I uh, speak to the comics, I ask them, you guys have done Comic View, you guys have done mm-hmm. Def Comedy Jam, which are two groundbreaking shows as yeah. far as uh, urban that's comedy. It. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted to know your experiences on both and what were some similarities and some differences with both Comic View and Def Comedy Jam. Well, when I did Comic View first, I, I, I broke my Achilles. Ooh. So I had a cast on my leg. Really? So when you see my I'm about first, to go back and watch when, that I, when you see my first <laughs> comic view, I didn't even move around. I had to stay there. <laughs> and that ain't you either. You no, you know that. <laughs> and it was a competition type thing. Oh. So it was the three comics and you pick the winner. And some more was one of the comics. Okay. And if I had to have my feet on me, I couldn't act my stuff out. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't win that one. Yeah. But I won. They had a, like a uh, like an Emmy type show. Mm-hmm. They had a award show, a Comic View. BET did. Mm-hmm. I won the Robin Harris Award for Most Original Comic of the Year. All right. And the big plaque right. is in my mama's house right now. All dude. right. That so, was my man, Robin. Yeah, man. Yeah. So I had to go to L.A. with a broke foot, looking man. like Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> I couldn't move. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. man. But it's funny. Like I said, I, I'm pretty sure I saw that show and everything. Saw y'all on there. Look and at yeah. it again. I'm not even moving. Yeah, you're not even moving. That's so not Tony Robin. And I did 10 seasons of Comic View. Wow. 10. Yeah. I spoke with Hope. I interviewed her, Hope Flood. She was talking about how, yeah, man, they were trying to, like, go and get, like, the y'all's money because they was like man that comic view was on for a while and they get them they get y'all no they money was, they was letting us have it but, <laughs> but you know what it helped because we didn't have no avenue we was on TV yep experience so was like hey I see you on BET at least we got that and then that was helping y'all fill up the comedy club yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. that helped us and then I got Def Comedy Jam yeah. which, which after that I moved to New York and never went back okay now yeah. Sumner like Sumner got you how did that Sumner, work how did that work you know what they had the auditions in Chicago Okay. So it's a five-hour drive from New York, from the, uh, Detroit. Okay. So uh, Perita Carson was my agent then, was my manager. I had my first little manager. Yeah. She said, I got to get you to New York. I got to get you to Chicago. But we got to go now because the, the, the thing is five hours away, and they start the, the show in three hours. So you yeah, we got to get on the she highway. She drove 100, 100 miles an hour. Now that's a manager. Shout out to her. <laughs> she drove 100 miles an hour and got me there. Right when they was at the last comic. Wow. And then they didn't want me to go up. They said, hey, we don't know him, blah, blah, blah. This, he's not on the list. And then uh, she told him, she said, look, you, I would never, never ask you to do nothing else. You'll never see me again if you don't like him. Yeah. Just give him Just give five him a minutes after this last comic right here. And then nobody, a couple of comics in the, uh, knew who I was from the, you know, Chicago. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. But he didn't. He gave me five minutes. Right after I got off stage, and I swear, as I'm talking to you right now, dude, <laughs> he pulled me to the side and said, what are you doing January 21st? All right. And that was your, I want you in New York. I'm putting you on Def Comedy Jam. That was your Def Comedy Jam. Man, 100 miles an hour. Man, we got hey, That hey, was God. Shout, Look shout at God. Out. Yes. Shout God, out. Drove, God drove me there. <laughs> well, he looked like Perita Carson. <laughs> he looked like her. <laughs> you right. You right. You right about that. That's and that's a good, how we came to Tony Robbins after that. That's a great story. Yeah, man. Man. That's the kind of stories I need on this pod. Yeah, Thank man. you for that. So you never know when you got fate meets faith. Exactly. You gotta exactly. be ready. When they two gonna come together, you gotta be ready. Exactly. Yeah. Now you've uh, done some uh, TV, man. I can remember uh, just kind of watching TV one day, and there was a show with Bill Bellamy, oh, yeah. and you on it. <laughs> so yeah, man, you done some TV as well. Tell me your experience with television. Check this out. The producer, the owner of the network of that network and that that uh, entertainment studios was Byron Allen. Okay. Byron Allen's from Detroit. Mm-hmm. He always Byron. been he always been a fan of mine. Okay. Just secretly, like I didn't really know him. Yeah. We're I'm in uh, Philly, doing some shows, and uh, he said, "Hey, 
can you fly here and have an interview with me? <laughs> so I had to fly to I had to fly to L.A. He wanted to talk to me about being on this the sitcom called Mr. Box Office. That's it. Dude, I sat in his office. He interviewed me and offered me the job. Wow. He didn't cast it like a like a uh, audition. Yeah, he didn't audition. No, yeah, a bunch of people. He handpicked everybody, yeah. but he had to talk to you first. He said, if I, if this talk go right, you'll be on the show, on the sitcom. So I flew from Philly, and I lived in LA, but I was mm-hmm. out there doing shows. Yeah, you was, yeah, you was I flew from in. Philly, did the interview, caught the next plane back. This is five hours each way. <laughs> just, just, just to get back to do the show, just kind of close. And I, and I got Mr. Box off. Yeah, I, I remember that too. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I dug it too. Like I and dug it. We did it. forty episodes. Okay, it was, okay. It was, it was. To you me, dug the TV. You dug the TV. Experience? Yeah, but it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's like sitcom. It's a chain on you though. Yeah. Yeah. When you do movies or do like you do your specials, or I do my specials. That's true. You can do you whatever can do, you like. You got your own pattern, your own pace. But this yeah. has it teach you how to do TV. It's, yeah. You know, everybody can't do TV. You got to wait for the line. You got to pause for the laughter. You got to you got to go in when you can, when you're supposed to. You got to hold back, and it, and it, it make it matures you yeah. as an actor. Yeah, I and get it. Did it for me. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Now, in terms of the whole shutdown thing, man. Hey, February came around, man. Everything was shut down. And now you back out here. Tell me like some of the differences that you or personally are taking in terms of uh, coming out here and everything, as far as as opposed to when we first uh, shut down. You doing anything differently out here? In well, these first clubs? of all, my uh, my February was phenomenal. Oh, okay. And then after that, it just so locked. so Let me so tell March you. is when everything shut what? down for you. <laughs> we did like Richmond. Then we did Richmond we first. We were. We was in Baltimore. Oh yeah. Then we did All Star Weekend. Oh, shit. which it was in Chicago. Sh- it was like mm-hmm. three or oh, six degrees. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> we did a show there for the guy who plays for the Bucks. We did a concert for them. Uh-huh. The next day, the NBA flew us to the Bahamas. I did two days out there for the wow. rookies. Oh my! So goodness. we out there partying, kicking everything. Get home. We had to pack up and get ready to take the family and a bunch of friends out. To Louisiana, we spent four or five days in Louisiana, kicking in, the, in down yeah. in French Quarter and everything. Damn, like New Orleans, and then came back. We did another city, and then bam, we was in the house. Man, and Couldn't then it was locked too, right? Couldn't believe it. But yep. now everybody, now people, now we back out. I could tell. I done been to um, St. Louis. We done been to Texas. Okay, you done been, been to a few places We've been, since you've been doing back comedy. Out. You mm-hmm. can tell. Been to Memphis. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Right? Yeah, you don't. But you out. can tell. You can, and then everybody's not out like that. Yeah. So everybody's seeing yeah. me on the thing mm-hmm. and talking to my agent. They got the same agent. Like, hey, what's going <laughs> on? Right now. So, so the thing is, like, where about work? You can feel the difference when people when they come to the shows now. Cause yeah. they can't pull it in full capacity like they want to. Yeah. But they so appreciate, they miss it, and they appreciate being yeah. out. Yeah. They they took it for granted back then. Mm-hmm. Now they appreciate it. I was they, gonna mention that. Every your every word, they like just I don't they care. They hanging what you on your every word. They were in the laugh. Yeah. And I could feel the the, the the appreciation. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's real good to hear. Okay, so I always kind of wrap it up with uh two questions. Like your uh favorite comedy clubs? Do you have uh specific comedy clubs you like performing in or cities? You could go cities eat as well. But just like your favorite comedy clubs, I know we got the improvs, we got the funny bones, mm-hmm. but are there some that you be like, "Oh man, I can't wait till I get there. I love performing there. I love the vibe." I'm to the city that we really love and we haven't been there in a while cuz they shut it shut the thing down with Seattle. Seattle. Seattle right. is a right. beautiful city, to, especially when you're not working, like when you are uh, off the, the day of the show or something. Yeah, you can just and go you chill out. you around the weekend, yeah. they got a beautiful city. Okay. We was at um, Bruce Lee's and her, his son's grave site. Wow. Took pictures and everything. Yeah. But it's a nice city, nice weather. It rains, but it's... Yeah. But we like like the Houston Improv. Houston, yes. That's one of My f- man Ali Sadiq down there. Yeah, that's yeah. one of our favorite cities. We okay. Love, we love Houston. Dallas is not bad either. We love, we love Texas. Okay. Uh... I personally like Chicago because I'm from Detroit. Chi-town. Yeah, they go but, hard. Yeah, but Chicago yeah. got good. I got a good fan base totally there because mm-hmm. I grew up in that in that area. in that area. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Pretty much. Um, and we like we love we love a lot of lot of cities, but to, yeah, yeah. To on top of the head, Texas, like Houston, and Dallas, yeah, Houston, and uh, Chicago, man. Okay, but those are the but ones. But the hangout, yeah. Seattle. Seattle. I got to keep Beautiful. that in mind. That's the reason why I asked. It man, you're being in Europe because I used to do shows over in, in England a lot. Oh, in, in the UK, and really? it's like it feels like you're in the UK. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. All right, cool. And then last but not least, who are you fanning on right now? In, in other words, like who are some uh, comedians? They can be up and coming or they can be like some of the kings and queens mm -hmm. that make Tony Roberts laugh. Who are some of those comedians? I like Sinbad. He's oh, the yeah. reason. He's yeah. the reason I am like I am on stage. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be high energy. I used to be real still. I took, kept the mic on the microphone. Uh -huh. On the microphone on the stand, and I seen him do a special Afro and Bell Bottom. And I that took was off. a good one too. But you know, yeah. you ever perform with him? You ever check? Never did a show with him. Really? But he knows that he's my idol. Yeah, you know? I was about to say because he's from uh, Michigan as well. Uh, Earthquake, he used to make me laugh. <laughs> but I like Dion Cole. I like his approach and his, his jokes. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I go to the upper coming. The guys you don't even know yet. Yeah, yeah. All these guys in these cities that, that do the five minute guest spots or the features for me. Indeed. I sit back and they, I call them geniuses. Yeah. They got some dope topics. They know how yeah. to carry it. It's, it's the up and comings. Yes, yes. So that was my yes. favorite. Yes. Of comedy. That's exactly And I'm a Fred I Fox had. dude. Oh, yeah. More than oh, the Richard yeah. Pryor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Red Fox. Okay. Yep. And yep. Robin Harris. Sanford and Son and then Robin Harris. We talked about that. So that had to be a yeah. huge uh, award when you won. That's, Robin when I, that's when my jokes is like just one after another. Just, I don't do, you know, that's, I like that pace. Exactly. You know? that, that, that's, that's why I became yeah. a fan of yours. Yeah, Hughley too. got that pace. Hughley. Yeah, like, I like mm -hmm. the, 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 that's me, though. All right, yeah. all right. Well, hey, man, hey, that's all I needed. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Malcolm like X. I said, been... <laughs> no, 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 no. Last night, last night you had me down all the way home. You said, hey, Melvin from The Temptations is out here. Hey. <laughs> it's like, he back. I came back here. He's like, hey, he back <laughs> from the dead. Temptations. I said, You're Lord, different. I said, this boy is sick, man. But thank you so much, though, for the energy. I man. appreciate it, bro. Yo, once again, thanks so much for checking out the pod. Very special thanks to my man, Tony Roberts. Make sure you check his Instagram and Facebook for future show and date info. Make sure you tune in next go round for another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast with another super dope comic and, of course, me, Melvin Williams. Y'all be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Peace out.